Hello, welcome back to Banner Sushi Life Noding. In this episode, I'm gonna share with you um, kind of like a work in progress that I'm doing. It's a part of my research uh, working um, the iPhone 10 to work with Blender. Um, while I was actually doing this experimental, and you might have noticed there's a video from Alicia Hung. He's a one artist working at a VFX uh, at Moonshine. Um, and he's actually apparently doing the same thing that I, what I'm doing, but I think he has much more um, code experience and Xcode. And he actually managed to get the face capture data from the iPhone 10, and he made a like a nice app. In and he actually released the code just like a few hours ago, and I was looking at it at uh, his GitHub. I downloaded his. Um, it's a code and then I test it on Xcode and apparently it is actually you can make it to work with Blender. He's using Houdini and he has some explanation here in Chinese but I'll try to explain uh, what's going on. So basically in order to do this you for your requirement will be you need to have the iPhone 10 that's first and you need to have MacBook Pro uh, or some kind of Mac OS that can run Xcode because you need to download this code basically just download the source code and with the source code like this face capture x you just open it open the xcode project and then just build and run it on the iphone 10 once you have the app you just simply need to capture uh, your face and it's gonna record a lot of data and it's gonna be using all the apple face ar geometry um, kind of like uh, ar kit or like Basically, this app allows you to capture uh, some data like this. Um, so I'm gonna show you real quick. I think this is uh, some of my face being captured. It's kind of uh, tilted, but yeah, based on of data. But it's actually um, he tidy up the data really, really well. And basically, um, I I had a quick look at it, and and I look at it inside Blender. The data looks something like this, so it's uh, basically uh, for each frames of the face data being captured uh, at 60 times per second, uh, it goes into the line. And for each line, there's a, a whole this bunch of data being separated by um, squiggly lines. Uh, we can't really see it here. Uh, but but all uh, there are how many data? Let me quickly check. So I'm using animation nodes here. There are apparently um, around one thousand two hundred and seventy-three data, I believe. And the first few lines actually represents the the matrix rotations, orientation of the head that's being tracked by the iPhone 10 and what's uh, for the next f uh, f thousand a thousand two hundred and twenty I believe that's uh, the number of the vertices yeah for the next one thousand two hundred and twenty data is all about the points vertex points of the head and then the rest of data there's actually this uh, coefficient blend shapes that's that's actually being tracked and being calculated on the fly in on the phone. So it, it is all part of the um, Apple um, Apple kit for augmented reality for the face. So a lot of data being captured and then um, here I'm using animation nodes to parse the data back into Blender. So as a result you're gonna see here um, this is my face. If I scrub on the of, uh, I'm using animation nodes and spare chalk add-on. Um, I'll okay. I'll I'll give you a quick breakdown of, of what's happening. So, if you have Apple uh, iPhone 10 and you have the MacBook Pro, you are in luck. You can do all this pretty easily, and you can use Blender uh, to put all together. Uh, you also need, in order to do what I'm doing here, you need animation nodes add-on and spare chalk add-on for Blender. Um, that's uh, unless you have Houdini and Houdini is another app, 3D app uh, that can do this kind of sort of uh, data parsing and etc. So anyhow, 
this is uh, I parsed this data using animation nodes. Basically, it's pretty uh, simple and straightforward. This is all the text data goes in and it's being separated by lines because each lines of data represents a single frame. And here, that's why I have this uh, get list element. So for each frame, it's gonna source just a single line of this data. And for each data, it is also there's like a bunch of data being separated by these uh, squiggly lines. Uh, I think you call it tilde. So I separate it. And then what's going on is, uh, because I just need to have the points here, I slice the data. I don't worry about the matrix and uh, blend coefficient yet. At some point, I will be using this to control the blend shapes. For now, I will be just uh, using the this slice data. And what I get is the just the points. And this is the points of the face of, uh, of my face that's being recorded on the fly. It is actually my face. And then this one, uh, I capture, this is, uh, I'm using another app that I developed basically to capture the mesh geometry. So this is the default mesh geometry. And this is the points data that's uh, being recorded using um, Alicia, Alicia Hung uh, app. And so yeah, animation nodes actually doing the hard job here, basically um, generating the mesh data on the fly. And this is actually just additional parsing of the data. It's pretty straightforward, everything. Just the value, like three values become a factor list. Um, because uh, the way the data being uh, recorded, uh, it's, it's all very tidy and very uh, very easy to read. I can easily bring it back as this uh, target mesh, all these points that are being generated by animation nodes. And then I use a uh, sphere chalk add-on basically to bring it together. So this is the data, this is the data coming from animation nodes, basically just the points. And this is the data coming from this uh, mesh face. Uh, and now we have these uh, animations. So with uh, with uh, Alicia Hong's experiment, I think he actually he mapped the original texture of the that's being captured as well, and then projected into the mesh. So he get this uh, very interesting face uh, kind of animations. So yeah, I will try to do the same for the next uh, live noting. Um, so face projection is another thing, but what's really interesting here? So we are we now. If you have the iPhone 10, you have Blender, you have actually like a face scanner and you can do this quite easily. You capture the face basically. You didn't capture the like the whole head with ears and hair. That's like a different thing. But face face animation is basically like a like solve uh, because of the iPhone 10. It, it is really like solve. It, uh, you kind of of course this like this face is kind of coarse. It's only like a triangulated mesh. 1,220 1, vertices, um, 2,304 faces because it's all triangulated. But you, you, you are able to capture this uh, facial expression and including all the blend shape coefficients, all simplified for you to do the animations. If you're like a 3D animators uh, like me um, or like a rigger or 3D artists uh, in general, you, you will find this very, very useful if you like to deal with uh, facial animations, especially. Uh, here, what I haven't done is actually uh, to do the matrix. I will do that for the next one, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this uh, live noting. Hopefully, this is useful for you if you want to uh, try it yourself. Thanks again for um, Alicia Hong to share his code. Really, really, I really appreciate it. And this is like a good way for you to study Xcode. And yeah, it's... The code is very simple and clean and it's very easy to understand. Um, I recommend you to try this. He actually uh, set it up so you can stream. You either record the data or you stream the data in real time. That's like a really big thing. You can actually uh, you can actually have this in real time if you want. But, but I found that sometimes baking and recording is uh, easier. Once you have this data, you can do anything with this data. You don't need to deal with uh, like a like real uh, real-time data it's both are uh, can be useful but anyhow this is like a uh, very cool um, yeah 
let me know what you think and if you have any question uh, just ask me in the comment section below thanks again for tuning in and i'll see you next time